Hi everybody. March 13, 2019. Weather bomb. Bombogenesis to bomb cyclone. This is what I captured earlier today. Wow. Okay, so uh, years ago people would refer to this as a landocane. A landocane. Oh, our very interesting weather. All right. Um, this is, this was early this afternoon. And wow, was this thing so artificial. Clearly, look at all of these like streaks of precipitation. Not how Mother Nature works, not in defined lines. And um, you have Park Nexrad rings and extremely low frequencies going through this entire storm. I'm going to read some comments. I'm going to go to some sites uh, to show you what's happening right now. Um, so obvious that this whole thing is manipulated. You don't even have to go, you know, look at uh, close-ups. You can see the harp next red ring right here. You can see all of the very defined lines, the extremely le uh, extremely low frequencies, the cutouts of the precipitation. And I'm also going to show you some news reports on uh, damage that has occurred New Mexico, Texas, Colorado. Um, but please, please guys, uh, South Dakota, Ohio, Nebraska, um, Colorado, look at this thing. Unbelievable. And I showed you what it was like Last night, it was just a, a straight line precipitation. You got pockets of precipitation up here. Well, this thing has certainly been blown up artificially. Artificially. And it looks like the jet stream is going every which way. Um, Yes, of course, you can see the microwaves. Well, let me take you to, this is the sub-regional sections. Um, you can see all of the radar going off right here. All of these gray circles, that is the Doppler radar sending frequencies uh, into this storm. You can see the microwaves, the rippled cutouts of this precipitation. Um, Wow. Well, this is very interesting. Uh, massive frequencies going through here. And, well, where am I? Am I, yeah, Kansas. What's happening in Kansas? Um, you can see the extremely low frequencies right here. All of, you'll see, this is so bizarre. These little, little dots of precipitation. And it does look like a circle, but as you can see, this is very straight lined, manufactured microwaves going through it. My God. Unbelievable. You can see the harp next red ring right in the periphery, well, let me go back a little. You'll see it jut out right here. And look at this. I mean, come on. You know, if you know a meteorologist, you need to go, not ask, but tell that meteorologist that you know that these storms are manipulated, manufactured by man, manipulated by man, and 
due to the damage that they are causing, you need to call that meteorologist out. You need to tell that meteorologist that you have no respect for them. Look at these extremely low frequencies right here. But the whole thing, I, I mean, it's like, uh, uh, this is the most bizarre storm I have seen man make. Now, in the Central Plains, we now have the beginnings of a hurricane. Really? Look at the harp next red rings. They're intersecting. They're going throughout this storm. And extremely low frequencies at the same time. So you have the high frequency heating of the ionosphere modulated with the extremely low frequencies and voila, you've got cyclones. Do I need to bring that up again? I'm going to. Here you go. High power, extremely low frequency radiation generated by modulated high frequency heating of the ionosphere can cause earthquake cyclones. We've got a bomb cyclone and localized heating. Well, that is what you are seeing. Uh, that is what you are seeing. These are the signatures of the high frequency heating right here. These very perfect circles coming from Doppler radar. That's the high frequency heating of the ionosphere. And whipping right through this storm, not only at the top, but throughout. And the extremely low frequencies, which are you know, pulsing away. Um, all right, well, yeah, unfortunately we can't get through to people. So, you know, there are people who are suffering the consequences of this storm as well. Um, so underneath this video that I posted last night, and please, guys, please leave comments. Let us know what is happening in your area because, you know, we don't know. We don't know. You know, they hype up these storms. They freak people out. Um, don't leave me a comment saying, oh, you should have no fear and uh, yada, yada, yada. I'm not freaked out. I'm not afraid. But a lot of people do get freaked out by these, you know, the hysteria, the drama queens on mainstream media. Um, and by the way, this bomb cyclone is heading east to the northeast. So um, the only way we can know for sure is if you guys contribute to telling us what is going on. Reno, today we had surprise snow. So today, I guess that was the 12th or the 11th. Um, the forecast is incorrect 90% of the time, raining when it should be sunny, snowing when it should be raining. Yeah. Um, Seattle Times today, a blizzard killed 1,850 dairy cows in the Yakima Valley. So I posted the video, 16, 1,600 cows. I had an article that I included in that video. 16. Well, now it's 250 more dairy cows dead. Uh, they changed the forecast again here in here this afternoon, northwest South Dakota. Much more snow, much more wind. Go figure. I break out with intense cursing at any time or every time I look at the forecast or hear uh, one on the radio. I get it. That mass of weather that passed through the Midwest today was anything but little. It was huge, tons and tons of rain, torrential downpours all day long, pockets of flooding everywhere. Well, you say the Midwest, um, where? Because other people were saying um, that was not the case. So pockets of flooding everywhere. You know, it's interesting because I'm going to YouTube and I'm, you know, I look for what has happened from these storms and I haven't seen any flooding videos. Are they? <clears throat> you know, and this is very concerning because, you know, all right, uh, I'll speak 
about myself personally. I have subscribers in areas. I want to know what has happened in those areas. And lately, I have had a lot of trouble finding out. Now, I used to be able to find out. So when I get a comment like that and I hear flooding everywhere, I'm like, okay, why, why have I not been able to come across any information about those flooding events? Uh, even saw a car wreck on the side street. Well, <laughs> the car wrecks in Colorado have been pretty uh, in the hundreds. Yeah. Extreme wind here in LA this evening. Northeast UK. UK was also getting their weather bomb. Well, you're kind of like our cousin, aren't you? You know, uh, US, UK. Northeast UK. We have strong winds here, but nothing like they're making it out to be. The only difference is there seems to be a sort of pressure that hits you. You feel it as the wind hits your body. Can't really describe it. Seems to go through you as wind pushes. A strange feeling. What I do see is the upper clouds hardly move, yet lower move fast. Yes, yes, I've seen that often. Um, and posted that exact um, condition. Uh, heavy rain and gales here in northeast Scotland. Beautiful this morning. Artificially enhanced storm. Uh, west coast hammered, the west coast of Scotland hammered through the night. South coast of Scotland. Uh, rain, shine, wind, gust of storm for the last week or more. Um, I live in Colorado. And it's so obvious that this is not a natural blizzard. Whatever they're mixing into the snow makes it so incredibly slick on the roads, it's beyond dangerous. I've dealt with snow for 30 years, and what they, are, what they have going on these days, especially in the last few years, has been so manipulated, it just doesn't resemble anything I've ever seen. You know what I also tried to find? Videos on people showing the styrofoam snow they're getting this year. I can't find any. Um, I have a subscriber up in Maine who said the snow looks like it's not real snow, but she didn't post a video. Um, and I've gotten other comments from people who are saying, you know, they're like little, little beads of styrofoam. Post videos, please. Um, very windy here east of England. We are in a blizzard in Arizona right now. Next week it will be up to the 70s, so they say. Um, Northeast Ohio, severe weather keeps being broadcasted for us to expect. Nothing comes except those gray skies. I am not even speaking of the traditional gray skies of winter. Even when the clouds break, the blue of the sky doesn't even look right. It's as if the blue is too deep of a blue. Wow. Well, Ginger, you're lucky to see the deep blue. Um, when we get, you know, an actual sky, it's a pale, pale, pale blue here in uh, South Carolina. So I have no idea what to expect anymore. None of us do. Um, interesting, but hard for me to read. I know that people now are talking. They can talk their comments. So maybe is there a way to put paragraphs? Um, I can't read when it looks like this because it just suddenly becomes all like just a a blurry mess for me. But elites, well, some have been buying up in our brother's country of New Zealand, South Island, has all the natural water from snowy mountains and land Obama's. Perhaps what? Yes, they did buy, I believe, um, land and water in New Zealand. Um, it's chemical ice nucleation flash freezing the cow. That sounds about right. The cattle that are dying. 
Denver, Colorado. I've lived here for 25 years, over 25 years. In all that time, I've never heard them forecast a weather bomb until now. Sounds made up to me. Isn't it funny how they are also naming winter storms now? Yeah. Um, now we're getting bomb cyclones in the middle of the country. Never used to do that either. It poured here last night and has already started to snow at an incredible rate. You should have seen how empty the grocery stores were, the shelves. Um, there was no produce left in the store at all. Northern Georgia, our skies are constantly poisoned. Saw peaks of sun yesterday. 25 mile an hour winds in Arizona, Lake Havasu. I don't know. <laughs> oh, you guys know uh, me pronouncing names, especially. Monday night, all the way into Tuesday afternoon, torrential, almost non stop rain. I heard nothing about Arizona. So thank you. Thank you, George, uh, Georgia, for leaving that comment. Uh, Texas rolling through right now in Dallas, Fort Worth. Strange sound a little bit ago. I thought it was a tornado. It woke me up, but it doesn't appear that it was. Buildings were shaking here in my city. This storm sure as hell is moving extremely slow, but the winds have been blowing upwards of 80 miles per hour. Planes have been halted. Trucks flipped over in different areas. There is damage in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. We will have 50 miles per hour wind gusts throughout the day. Somebody hacked the sirens in one of the cities and crews had to go out and shut them all off one by one. Barriers put up because of flash flooding. Power lines down in some areas. If it were a natural storm, it should have moved through Texas by now. Yes. Indeed. Power outages in Texas, high winds, rain, and red and blue lightning. Nothing striking the ground. That was on Mr. MBB333. Um, okay. Well, lots of comments. And um, look at this. Amarillo, Texas. Now, I can't play this because I'll get a copyright strike. This is Live Storms Media. Not for broadcast. Okay. This truck, all of a sudden you see it just flip over. And, okay, why? Now, uh, that kind of wind? I would have thought you would have seen the signs blowing in the wind. Something. Um, another one goes. Strange wind, don't you think? So, Texas, North Texas. High winds flipped a mobile home onto a car in Cleburne and Johnson County. Police say one person was taken to the hospital. No word yet on their condition. And our chopper also caught this in Johnson County. Those high winds took down a semi. No word if the driver was hurt. And in Dallas, where a massive tree fell on top of two houses on Tanner Street near Fair Park, two people were inside each home. Amazingly, they were not hurt. Right now, firefighters are on the scene making sure the homes won't collapse. And lots of people waking up, getting ready for work in the dark. The in the dark. Um, all right, well... Let me, and please, you guys in Texas, let us know. Apparently, there was under, just under 500,000 people without power. I think a lot of that power has been restored, but please tell us. Traveling today, though. Yeah, you want to check with your airline before you head out. And airport damage continues into Grand Prairie, where small planes were tossed, mangled at that city's airport. Let's get out to our Chris Sadegi with more on that. They've got the heavy machinery out here at the Grand Prairie Airport after high winds tore the doors off of hangars and also flipped over aircraft. I talked to an airport employee. He said that the peak winds that they measure from the airport tower reached over 
100 miles per hour and it tore the hangar doors off of eight rows of hangars and also damaged around 40 aircraft, some of those aircraft completely destroyed. We had a shot from our helicopter showing some of those airplanes completely overturned onto their top. So they will be cleaning up all day today. And I talked to Don't that. Don't you think it's interesting, this kind of wind? I mean, it look, you know, it's literally flipping over semis, semi trucks, um, planes, 100 miles per hour, a tree topples and does damage to two homes. And it's incredible that, um, <laughs> well, yeah, a mobile home just flipped over, landed on the car. It seems almost as if the wind, it just, I guess these wind gusts um, just do this damage little little pockets of damage you know this is tornado damage taking down houses semi trucks flipping over planes 40 planes damaged um, it's bizarre oh my goodness oh oh Right now at 11, strong storms tear through North Texas. This is video of a roof being ripped off of an Amazon logistics facility near DFW Airport. And you can get a better look at the damage in the daylight. The crumpled metal crash on the cars, leaving debris everywhere. And check out this scene at Grand Prairie Municipal Airport. Some small planes turned upside down and on their sides. Yep. Um... This is the damage that is being reported in a lot of mainstream media news broadcasts. Same two homes, the planes, uh, the home that flipped over on the car. It, uh, I, uh, it's, well, I wish I had some words to describe what I'm trying to think, what, what I'm thinking of, but look, it just seems bizarre you know that the winds are just almost targeting <laughs> targeting um, specific areas or but not even an area just one home semi trucks um, oh well all right we are following an intense storm known as a bomb cyclone that is howling across Colorado tonight. The governor has declared a state of emergency. High winds and heavy blowing snow have made travel next to impossible. Janet Shamley reports from Denver. The Mile High City hobbled by a powerful blizzard. With gusts nearing 100 miles an hour, the strongest storm in decades. The blinding snow creating whiteouts and hundreds of accidents. Emergency crews rescuing each other as firefighters came to the aid of a police officer. The National Guard called in to help dozens of stranded vehicles. Oh, a tree just fell down. The system known as a bomb cyclone, a hurricane in winter. We are not even at the peak of the storm and look at this. Winds at the Denver airport have been at 50 miles an hour with gusts more than 70 miles an hour. Those are hurricane force winds. Thousands of students took a mid-March snow day, a good call in Fargo, North Dakota, where heavy snow collapsed a school roof. More than 1,300 flights canceled at the Denver airport. Technically open, but all the runway shut down. Are you just going to hang here? Yeah, until we can figure out how we can get like a rental car or something. The same system slammed New Mexico with tornadoes. And in Texas, the winds sheared through an apartment complex. Okay, look. Um something <clears throat> I'm sorry look at all of those bricks so the winds literally sheared off the bricks of the apartment complex have you seen something like this that well it's not a tornado just winds doing this this is bizarre damage uh, tell me if I'm wrong is anybody you know um, feeling the same and look now Colorado gets snow okay 
Colorado gets snow. What's going on that they have hundreds of accidents that first responders are rescuing first responders? What is going on with this snow that these trucks and there's plenty of people in Colorado who have four-wheel drive. What's going on? Well, remember uh, the comment that we got from a subscriber in Colorado. Incredibly slippery. So what are they putting in the snow that is making it incredibly slippery? And when you when you have to drive on incredibly slippery uh, surfaces and then you end up having to suffer the consequences because there's massive uh, crashes. Yeah, they were reporting last night that all the interstates would be closed in Colorado. Okay, we get snow in Colorado, right? Right? All the interstates are going to close down including I-70. No, uh, all right, you have a whiteout. Um, you wait for, you know, the whiteout to lift, and you go on. But we're not talking, you know, massive amounts of snow on this road to have caused the damage that you'll hear about in one second. Hurricane in winter. We are not even at the peak of the storm, and look at this. Winds at the Denver airport have been at 50 miles an hour with gusts more than 70 miles an hour. Those are hurricane-force winds. Thousands of students took a mid-March snow day, a good call in Fargo, North Dakota, where heavy snow collapsed a school roof. More than 1,300 flights canceled at the Denver airport technically open, but all the runways shut down. Are you just going to hang here? Yeah, until we can figure out how we can get like a rental car or something. The same system slammed New Mexico with tornadoes. And in Texas, the winds sheared through an apartment complex. Here in Colorado, renewed concern about avalanches tonight. And about an hour south of here, a hundred or so motorists stranded along Interstate 25 after a 50-car pileup. Some of those cars have now run out of gas. Jeff, here in Denver, 180,000 people still without power in bitter cold in what's expected to be a multi-day recovery. Wow. Jeff. Okay, so let us know. This was just posted a couple of hours ago. All right. This is Sydney, Nebraska. The church, kind of, you can see it. There's big old drifts in our front lawn. Yeah, super windy, super snowy. Okay, well, this is Nebraska as well. This is Anselmo, Anselmo Nebraska, March flooding. going on. This is also Nebraska, Madison. These were posted today. So Nebraska, uh, you sure did have weird weather. Snow in parts, rain and flooding in other parts. Yeah. Good evening. One southeastern New Mexico town took the brunt of tonight's storms. A tornado touched down in Dexter, damaging homes and sending people to the hospital. News 13's Elena Mendoza is live in Dexter tonight with the latest. Elena. Dean, a surreal night for many here in Dexter tonight. Earlier when it was still light out, you could see the path where the tornado came through. 
The Chavez County Sheriff's Office says the tornado touched down just before 6 this evening. No fatalities have been reported, and so far we're hearing at least five have been taken to the hospital with minor injuries. Officials have already done one sweep to make sure everyone is accounted for and plan to do another tonight. We're told there are about 10 homes that have been damaged or destroyed. The whole town is without power with several down power lines. I talked to one woman who was inside her home when the tornado tore the roof off. I went into the kitchen and that's when I saw a lot of dust and we didn't have our back door or our porch because that's what's back there. I don't believe we've ever had a tornado hit in the middle of Dexter and so it's it's really surreal for a lot of for, for all of us actually uh, and the amount of damage that it caused in the short amount of time that it, came, that it was here. There was also a gas leak in town, but that has since been repaired. Officials are setting up a command post overnight and into tomorrow. Highway 2 that I'm standing on also received a lot of damage with debris covering it and will be closed until further notice. And the Red Cross is helping any displaced family. The Red Cross. All right, so tornadoes in New Mexico. Um, New Hampshire ever source to trim 2,800 miles of trees to prevent damage during storms. All right, well, good that they're trimming the trees, but I included this because a lot of people have been saying that they're taking down trees due to 5G, those millimeter waves, the trees get in the way of those waves. But 2,000 800 miles. All right. This is what it looks like now. Look at, wow, okay. Today, no radar pulsing on the east, the eastern half of our country. Um, well, now, boom, here we go. They're bringing it east, or trying to. Um, it frankly, uh, uh, all right. This has split off. This continues um, in Nebraska. So I hope you guys are okay in Nebraska. It looks like you've got a harp next red ring right smack on the top of what is this? What what are what are we seeing? Um, is is that like the sp they're trying to spin an eye or is that the eye? No, that's Doppler radar. That little circle that appears right here. Can you see the frequencies going through this? Right down here, the extremely low frequencies. The defined lines in the blue. What they're my god, they are really screwing up, screwing around with Mother Nature. And you know, all of this is it's not good. I mean, it's really not good because there are consequences when you think you're God and then you take control of the natural processes. You know, the mother nature must be trying to fight back but look at all of these extremely low frequencies. Um, are they perhaps trying to pull this east? It doesn't look like it's going east. It looks like it's going north. Though this is just sitting in the same area. Is it the same area? Let me take a look. Was it down in... Uh, sorry. Oh, maybe it's the beginning. Yeah, okay. 
There it is. All right. Oklahoma, Kansas, Nebraska. And that was earlier this afternoon. So, this is what it looks like. It's still in Nebraska. Let's, uh, Look at all of these extremely low frequencies. This is now, by the way. You can see, I mean, it's so clear that you've got man's hand in this and the Doppler radar pulsing away, pulsing away, pulsing away intensely in some areas, a little less intense in other areas. Uh, this is Missouri. And I did see um, you can also see the microwaves here. You, you don't even have to do the subregional. You can see the harp next red rings right up here, and they're intersecting. Um, all of this it doesn't necessarily mean that great damage is taking place, let's say, in North Dakota, but it you can't rule it out. Not when you see these Doppler radar stations shooting away. So I hope that all of you are okay. I hope, you know, I don't, I... I may not get comments from some people in Colorado because of the power outages. Please let us know, guys. And with these Doppler radar stations blasting away, I could I felt sick last night. I could not sleep. It was kind of like an induced um, virus or whatever it was, but I could not sleep at all. You tired of this, guys? All links are 